Welcome to Vanadium. I'm Chris Rankin. The more I learn about this mad world, the more mysterious it seems. Where exactly is the line between inert, inanimate matter and the stuff of life? Some argue viruses are the intersection between chemicals and biological organisms. Viruses certainly meet the most important and clearest criterion for life. Viruses reproduce. Viruses themselves are very simple biological machines, constructed out of different kinds of protein structures to stand up to the environment and to deliver their payload of genetic information to the host cell, which is typically much larger and more complex. Once the host cell is infected, the viral DNA takes over the cell's factories and machinery to build viral proteins and construct the next generation of viruses. Is there something more basic, more primordial, older than a virus that meets this reproductive definition for life? But how could something be simpler than a virus and still possess sufficient complexity to reproduce? Could a simple chemical, just a few atoms, somehow come alive? Could a chemical somehow develop the will to copy itself, to demonstrate this most important characteristic of life? The simplest biomolecule, a protein, is just a sequence of amino acid subunits lined up in just the right order. They're arranged in such a way that, kind of like origami, this string tends to want to fold itself up like a spring, to knot itself up in just the right way that it assumes a three-dimensional structure. This is called the protein's tertiary structure. A protein is the most basic biological building block. It takes nearly half a million proteins to make up the human body. A prion is a single protein, a little string of amino acids, just a hair on a virus's back. But this little molecule, this little prion protein, is a predator, a chemical monster. The word prion means proteinaceous, infectious particle, derived from the words protein and infection. A prion is an evil protein. I believe a less severe description wouldn't do these things justice. But what makes a prion different from the normal, healthy protein in the body? Well, the distorted prion protein is nearly identical to the standard protein. It's even hard to tell them apart. They have almost the same shape and chemical makeup. Prions are almost the same as the proteins they corrupt and destroy. The three-dimensional tertiary structure is nearly identical, but with a slight distortion, just a little kink. However, this slight deformity comes with strange and dangerous consequences. Once a prion meets up with its good twin, the healthy protein, it instantly transmits this distortion in structure. Now there are two distorted proteins, two prions, both endowed with the ability to transform others. So prion infections typically start off very slow while these scattered chemical predators find one another, but quickly grow severe when these things start to multiply. Prions form clumps called amyloids, which accumulate in infected tissue. Similar amyloids are responsible for several other neurodegenerative diseases, such as Alzheimer's disease and Parkinson's disease. Prion aggregate amyloids are very stable and this strength of structure means that prions are resistant to destruction or denaturation by chemicals or heat, so they can't be destroyed by ordinary disinfection or cooking. Effective prion decontamination relies on destruction of the protein's 3D tertiary structure, which would take very strong acids or bases, or temperatures that would melt most things in the room. Overwhelming evidence shows that prions persist in the environment for years. It has been recognized that prion diseases can arise in three different ways, acquired, familiar, or sporadic. The primary method of acquired infection in animals is through ingestion. It is thought that prions may be deposited in the environment and through the remains of dead animals and via urine, saliva, and other body fluids come in contact with other animals. They may linger in the soil by binding to clay and other minerals. Prion diseases can also be inherited by the disease proteins hitching a ride along from one of the parents. Sporadic infection means the cause is unknown. 
that perhaps the prion adopted the dangerous shape due only to random chance. Normal proteins may just go bad sometimes. That's a scary thought. The earliest identified prion disease, scrapie, is a fatal degenerative disease affecting the nervous systems of sheep and goats. Scrapie has been known since the 1700s and doesn't appear to be transmissible to humans. It is one of several spongiform encephalopathies caused by prion infection. This means the brain tissue in the infected animal starts to soften, degrade, and take on a spongy appearance or morphology. In 1996, Oprah Winfrey introduced the world to the most famous prion disease, bovine spongiform encephalopathy, also known as mad cow disease, is a prion disease infecting cattle. Symptoms include abnormal behavior, impaired walking, and severe weight loss. Later in the course of the disease, the cow becomes unable to function normally. The time between infection and onset of symptoms is generally four to five years. Time from the onset of symptoms to death is generally weeks to months. Cattle become infected by being fed meat and bone meal, containing either the remains of other cattle with the disease or scrapie infected sheep products. Spread to humans is still fairly rare. As of 2018, a total of 231 cases of mad cow disease have been reported globally. Kuru is a very rare, untreatable, and fatal neurodegenerative disorder that was formerly common among the Foray people of Papua New Guinea. Kuru is another form of spongiform encephalopathy. The term Kuru derives from the Foray word kuria, meaning to shake, due to the physical tremors that are a classic symptom of the disease. Kuru itself means trembling. It is also known as laughing sickness due to the strange outbursts of laughter, which is another symptom of the disease. It is now widely accepted that Kuru was transmitted among members of the Foray people through funerary cannibalism. Deceased family members were traditionally cooked and eaten, which was thought to help free the spirit of the dead. The epidemic likely started when a villager developed the sporadic form of the disease and died. When the other villagers ate the brain, they ingested the prions and contracted the disease. It was then spread to other villagers who ate their infected brains. Fatal insomnia is another rare prion disease that results in sleep becoming impossible. Sleep problems typically start out gradually, but worsen over time. Other symptoms may include speech problems, coordination problems, and dementia. It results in death within a few months to a few years. The average survival time from onset of symptoms is about 18 months. The first recorded case was an Italian man who died in Venice in 1765. Fatal insomnia has four stages. Stage one is characterized by ever worsening insomnia, eventually leading to panic attacks and paranoia. Stage two brings hallucinations and panic attacks that become more severe and frequent, debilitating. Then stage three comes the complete inability to sleep. This is followed by rapid loss of weight. Then stage four, the patient succumbs to dementia, then becomes unresponsive over the course of six months. This is the final stage of the disease. Death quickly follows after this. As fatal insomnia progresses, the afflicted become stuck in a state of half drowsy, pre-sleep, or hypnagogia, the condition just before sleep in healthy individuals. Sleeping pills, including barbiturates, are totally ineffective. In fact, they've been shown to perhaps even worsen the symptoms. All known prion diseases are untreatable and fatal. There are no promising therapies or cures in the pharmaceutical pipeline. Science is stuck and confused. In 2013, a study revealed that one in 2,000 people in the United Kingdom might harbor the infectious prion protein. So prions are just out there, waiting, slowly searching for the next prey protein to target. They're more than just chemicals. Prions challenge science as to what a disease is and what it means to be alive. Thank you very much. This is Chris Rankin with Vanadium.